Hello. Uh, today I'm going to be discussing vortex dynamics. Uh, this is chapter 5, uh, especially 5.1. Um, now we're going to start off with the discussion of the concept of the vortex tube. Uh, this is actually very similar to the stream tube, which we've already discussed. Um, but just to give you a quick recap, uh, a vortex line is just a curve within the fluid that is everywhere tangent to the vorticity vector, right? So it's any of these lines here along this vortex tube is going to be one vortex line. And the vorticity vector is just this component gamma right here, right? This gamma component here and this gamma component here. So the vorticity vectors. Now, if you want to take the circulation around a vortex tube, uh, you can use this equation right here. Um, and this capital gamma component here, this corresponds to uh, something called the strength of the vortex tube. Uh, now the strength of the vortex tube is basically just uh, the circulation that you compute when you take uh, just a closed circuit lying on the surface of the tube and circling it a single time. Right? So we take this circulation around this exterior of the tube just one circle around on that surface, right? And so from Stokes' theorem, we know that this is going to be equivalent to the surface integral of the vorticity vector. So we take this surface integral of the vorticity, and this splits up into three components. The top component, so the component corresponding to um, fluid leaving, sorry, what's corresponding to the vorticity through this uh, surface area. And then we have the bottom component, which will be the component of the vorticity, which is flowing into this surface area, and the side component. And the side component we know is going to uh, go to zero. So this is going to go to zero. So you can get rid of that immediately. Now what we're left with are the top and bottom components, which uh, turn out to be uh, equal and opposite of one another. And so what we can say is that these components then equal zero. And the reason that we can say that they equal zero is from Gauss's theorem. So um, from Gauss's theorem, we know that a surface integral like this one is equivalent to the divergence, I'm sorry, to the volume integral of the divergence of the vorticity, right? So this surface integral of uh, the vorticity through some uh, through some surface area component is equivalent to the volume integral uh, of the divergence of the vorticity, and that is inside of this inside of this volume here. So this defined uh, sort of enclosed section of our of our vertex tube. And so the thing is that this uh, vorticity vector, the vorticity is equivalent to, uh, vorticity is equivalent to the curl of the velocity vector, right? And so what we're taking here is actually the divergence of a curl, and we know that the divergence of the curl equals uh, zero, right? So I'm just going to clear out a few of these things, and we'll say divergence of the curl equals zero. And this zero right here just corresponds to the one that's up here. So this is good. Uh, this is interesting because what we can do here is now we can say, okay, well, then the strength of the vortex tube at the top is just equivalent to the strength of the vortex tube at the bottom. And that turns out to be true. And that's true everywhere. So the strength of the vortex tube uh, is the same everywhere which implies then that vortex lines cannot end within a fluid, although they can form loops and they can end at solid boundaries and some other things like that. So from here, we're going to move on into a few examples of uh, types of vortex rotation, uh, starting off with solid body rotation and then moving on to irrotational, uh, an irrotational vortex. Uh, so that'll be in the next component.